All right, everyone. Thank you for joining us on today's Perfect Mind webinar, Twitter 101, Twitter Basics for Your Business. Uh, my name is Datis Mosenipour, and I'm the Marketing and Events Coordinator for Perfect Mind. And today what we'll be covering, as it says in the title, is just a basic view of Twitter and its core functions. The topics that we'll be covering in today's webinar are terminology that's used on Twitter. Uh, like with any new software, when you're learning something, there are some new tech comments and new terminology that comes associated with that program. So we'll cover the basic ones to get you going on Twitter. We'll also teach you a very basic view of how to set up your Twitter account. They have it set up quite straightforward, but we'll cover some things that you do not want to miss and some important factors to consider when setting up your account. And we'll also take a look at the new Twitter interface and its various features, as well as the basic functions on Twitter and how to use them. Before we start, we're going to start off with a quick pop quiz. Uh, so without using Google, everybody, please type in the chat box when you think Twitter was first founded. We'll give everyone a moment to do that. And we have a winner. Skylar, good job. 2006. Twitter was founded in March of 2006. Now let's move on into Twitter terminology. So you may have heard terms such as tweet and retweet and hashtag and mentions. Uh, these are all some, some key terms that are associated with Twitter. And uh, they might be Greek to you, but hopefully after this little session here, you'll be able to uh, understand this terminology. So let's start off with a tweet. What it is is a 140-character post that is broadcasted to your network of friends on Twitter, which are called actually followers. So the reason you are only limited to 140 characters is because Twitter was originally meant to be heavily mobile focused. And at the time, a lot of text messaging programs only allowed up to 140 characters. Some of the uh, non-smartphones still only limit to 140 characters. So this is why you are limited to 140 characters when you're using Twitter. So keep that in mind. Um, this is very important for when you're picking your username, which we'll touch on a little bit later. Mentions are the main form of communication between, between you and any other Twitter account. So, for example, if we wanted to give our sister company a shout out, we would want to mention them. In order to do so, what you have to do is comp compose a new tweet and provide the at symbol in front of the username. So if I'm trying to give a shout out to our sister company, Champions Way, I would put the at symbol in front of their username and include it in my tweet. So here you can see the example. Hey, Champions Way, how are you? Now, Champions Way is our sister company. What they do is they are a martial arts software and service provider specific to the martial arts industry. Now we're taking a look at what followers and following are. Um, in the world of Twitter, basically you don't have any friends. I don't mean it in a harsh way. What I mean is that you only follow people and people follow you back. But people are not obligated to follow you back. In Facebook, if you want to become friends with somebody, it has to be a mutual agreement. If you send a friend request out and the person does not want to be your friend, they could decline it and you won't be able to get their information. Whereas in Twitter, you're not obligated to follow somebody back. So if someone has started following you and you have no interest in them, you don't have to follow them back. Um, when you follow to someone, essentially what you're doing is you're subscribing to see the tweets that they post. You have a home feed, which we'll look at later, which displays all the tweets of the people that you are following. And that's where that would appear if you do decide to follow someone. If you do not follow someone, obviously they won't appear on your home feed. A retweet, it's kind of all in the name, but it's, it's basically rebroadcasting somebody else's tweet to your network. So if someone posts something very interesting and you feel that your network of people would gain benefit from it or you just want to share it with all your friends, then all you do is hover over the post and you'll click what's called the retweet button. And that'll redistribute that tweet from that person to your entire network of followers. But it will source the person who originally posted the tweet. So here if TechCrunch posted this, this post here, and I thought it was interesting, I can hit the retweet button and it'll appear on my profile, but the source will still be TechCrunch. So you're still crediting the person but you are redistributing it to your network. Now, in the past, there, you, there wasn't always a retweet button. What people would do was they would manually type in the retweets, 
but due to the character limit, sometimes it would get a little complicated. So if someone had a long username, uh, it would take out some characters, and then you couldn't always post the full tweet. You'd have to abbreviate it and take some words out. So what Twitter w did was recognize this issue, and they developed this retweet button to make it both easier and quicker. But some people are still using the traditional method of retweets. Hashtags are something that you may have seen increasingly grow over the internet and social media. Um, sometimes you'll see it on Facebook. It doesn't really have a function on Facebook. Um, whereas within Twitter and Google Plus, a hashtag is actually a type of it, a tag. What it does is it groups keywords together. So if, if I'm posting on the subject of social media, at the end of my post, I might include hashtag social media. Now with uh, hashtags, there's no spaces. Space is actually separated, and the word after the space will not be included in the tag. So notice here how social media is just all one word. Um, I'll show you an example of hashtags to get a better understanding. So I'm just going to open up Twitter here. And here I've done a search for social media on Twitter. And I'll search all the tweets. What it does is it shows me all the tweets that have included the hashtag social media. So here if you look at We Are Human, um, they hashtag social media and then included some links and some comments. Or Chris Robinson here, uh, he made a white paper that's on mobile future. So he hashtag social media. And what that does is it indexes that post. So anyone who's searching for social media will see all these different posts that have the hashtag social media. So all it does is it really groups things into categories, if you would. Let's go back to the PowerPoint here. Those are the main terminologies that you want to know about Twitter. Um, as you go through, you'll hear some other stuff and learn some other kind of jokes within Twitter. But those are the core things that you need to know to get your Twitter account rolling. Uh, now we're going to take a very basic look at setting up a new Twitter account. Twitter has laid this out nice and nice and user friendly. It's really easy to use and it's really simple to go through. Uh, basically, all you do is visit Twitter.com. And then on the, on the right-hand side of the screen, you'll see a place to, where you can set up a new account. There you'll enter your full name, your email, your desired password, and hit the Sign Up button. From there, you'll be able to choose an account name. Now, uh, as I mentioned before, you want to try to avoid going over the top with your username, because if you have too many characters, that's less characters that people can use to mention you. So if you're limited to 140 characters and you want to mention someone, there's and someone's username is 14 characters, that's 14 characters less that you have to uh, make a comment or make a mention. So uh, do keep in mind that you do want to have uh, a shorter, shorter username. Now, another thing you want to keep in mind is that you want to avoid seeming spammy. So if your company is called Joe's Fishing Company, you, you don't want to call it JFC1572. That seems like a spam bot, right? And no one's really going to understand what JFC is the abbreviation of. So try and uh, keep it consistent with your brand. Um, if your Facebook username is facebook.com forward slash uh, Joe's Fishing, make, try and make your Twitter account twitter.com forward slash Joe's Fishing. That should be your username, Joe's Fishing. If it's not available, find an alternative that still stays consistent with your brand, isn't overly long, and doesn't seem spammy. So um, it may be a little bit of a difficult thing, but try and put some thought into it before you do set up your username. Um, Twitter does allow you the option to change it, but I suggest take the, th take the initiative, take the thought, and do it right from the start. Do it right. So um, after you set select your username, you'll be taken through a short tour, which will give you some instructions on uh, different people you could follow and how to follow people. You are able to skip these steps, but just give it a shot and see how it goes. Uh, lastly, you'll be able to upload a profile picture and a biography, as well as your uh, website URL. Uh, take the time on this step. Set it up properly right from the start. You don't want to have to keep going back and having to change it. Um, what you want to do is you want to make sure that your biography really speaks on who you are. And please, please, please make sure to add your website URL. Why would you not add your website URL on this network? If you're going to start getting numerous followers, you want them to know where your website is. You want to use this as an avenue to drive traffic to your website. So don't, don't miss out on that opportunity. Don't just fill out half your Twitter bio and think you're going to get back to it later. 
do it right from the start and do it right. We're going to do another pop quiz before we get into the layout of Twitter. Um, again, without using Google, give a guess as to how many estimated Twitter users there are out there. All right, Denise. Good. So there is an estimated 300 million users on Twitter, and it's actually coming close to being to 400 million. So I don't know if you've known this, but Twitter has been growing very rapidly. It's right up there in the ranks of Facebook. It, it, is, the, it is the second second person on that podium there. So it is a very big social network. It is getting increasingly popular, and it isn't a fad as people thought it would be. It's continuing to grow, and 400 million people are almost using it. Now we're going to actually go into Twitter and take a look at the layout. We'll start by looking at uh, how the header is set up, the different buttons that are there, and the different options that you have. And then we'll have an in-depth look at those options, such as the Home tab, the Connect tab, the Discover tab, the Search bar, and Account settings. So I'm just going to jump out of the PowerPoint presentation here, and we're going to load up our Twitter account. So here, if you look at the top, here you'll see your Home tab, the Connect tab, the Discover tab, our search bar, account settings, and here you see this feather, feather-like pen. That's just another option on how you can compose a tweet. So we'll start on the left-hand side here with the sidebar. Here you'll see at the very top, you'll see in a very small little box there your, lo your logo and a hyperlink to your username. Uh, this allows you to go and view your, per your profile page. So that gives you a look here on how your profile appears to others. Uh, but we're going to go back and focus more on the home page. Under that, you have the amount of tweets that you've composed, the amount of people that you're following, and the amount of followers that you have. And directly below that, you're also able to compose a tweet there. Now, if you scroll down a little bit lower on the, on the sidebar, you're also able to see suggestions on who to follow. So Twitter will make suggestions on different people for you to follow based on the people you're currently following. And you can choose to remove those or you can view them all in a, in a larger screen or you can refresh it to see some new suggestions. And below that are trends. What trends are are, well, as it says in the name, trends, what people are talking about the most on Twitter. Um, you can focus this geographically. So right now this is worldwide trends and we could see that this is going to be different than if we focus it just on the United States. So we could change that and we can even take it to a lower level and focus on maybe Washington. And we'll see that people, what people are saying specifically in Washington. Maybe there's a Limp Biscuit concert going on, or these are all the common things that people are really tweeting about right now. Now we'll get to the core of it, which is the tweets. So as I said, this is your home page. This is a list that populates of all the different tweets from people you are following. So this will constantly update live. If you refresh, it'll change. And if you if you actually let it settle for a few minutes, you'll see at the top that it will give you an option to uh, populate the new tweets that have arrived since your last visit. So this is where you really get the, the insight on all, your, on, on all the people that you're following and get to see what they're putting in a live feed. Moving on to the Connect tab, here you're able to see the different interactions that people are having with you. It's broken down into two sections. Uh, one is mentions and one is interactions. So if you recall from the terminology section, mentions are any form of communication that people are having with you. So if people are typing your username in, um, this is where it will appear. Uh, interactions is kind of a broader scope. It also includes different people that are following you as well as people who are mentioning you and people who are retweeting your posts. So all that can be found on the Interactions tab. If you go into the Mentions tab, it'll narrow it down to just your mentions and your retweets. Again, if you look at the sidebar here, you'll also see the Who to Follow again. Uh, this is quite prominent in Twitter. I guess they're encouraging more and more people to follow one another, which is a great thing. And lastly, we'll move over to the uh, Discover tab. 
under the Discover tab, they actually recently launched a new feature to Twitter, which is called uh, Stories. So Stories is a collection of uh, stories that are displayed through Twitter. And what you can do is kind of get details on it and see who's tweeting about that specific story, uh, see the different hashtags that are following it, how Twitter users are reacting to these different stories that are being posted. So it's a cool way of seeing some common trends. And uh, often enough, these things will actually uh, appear on the trending section on the side here. Activities is similar to the Interactions tab that we looked at just earlier. However, this, is, this kind of flips the role. Uh, the Interactions tab is for you to see who, how people are interacting with you. Uh, now, the Activity tab is the same thing, except for it flips the role on the people you're following. So rather than seeing your uh, followers and your activities, you're seeing the activities that your followers are experiencing. So here we could see that one of the per people we're following, Francis Wu, followed all these different people over here, and that Ali Morgan is now following Carrie Underwood. And you can see different interactions and how different people uh, interact with others. This person favorited Waleed Mohammed's post. And uh, yeah, this is essentially the Interactions tab but for, your, for the people that you are following. Again, on the left-hand side here, there's the Who to Follow tab. And, and this is actually a, an in-depth look at it. So on the other pages, on the other tabs, you'll see, you'll see um, just a few suggestions. If you click in here, you get to see all the suggestions that Twitter has for you uh, of Who to Follow. And then you can go in there and either follow the person or remove them from the list. If you keep scrolling down, it'll keep populating more people for you. And then you can go back to the top there. Uh, another option, which is actually quite cool, uh, if you use any of these major mailing so, uh, programs, such as Gmail, Yahoo, Hotmail, AOL, you're able to actually connect your Twitter account to any of these major mailing systems and uh, search your contacts for people who are currently on Twitter. Uh, once you do that, once you connect it, It'll populate a list of the people that you have on your, let's say, Gmail account. And you'll be able to go in there and individually choose whether or not you want to follow those people in your email list. And you can also invite people who aren't on Twitter to join you on Twitter. And lastly, in this section, in the Discover section, we have Categories. Categories is a really cool feature. Uh, it's all in the name. It's uh, a compilation of different categories. Here you could look at anything from music to uh, fashion to food and drink and tech. Uh, this is very helpful to seek inspiration because Twitter populates people that are real influencers in these industries. So if we look at tech and we open it, we'll see that uh, Bill Gates is in there, Twitter, Gadget Lab, TED Talks, Pete Cashmore, founder of Mashable, all these different influencers in the tech industry are there. So if we're, if we're a tech company, if we sell tech merchandise, these are great people to follow because we'll be able to seek inspiration from them. We'll be able to see latest, the latest trends in technology. We'll also be able to hop in there and you know repost other people's posts that we think our followers might find are interesting. So it's a, it's a great way to get inspiration. And uh, also, if you're, if you're a sports fan or if you're a music fan, you can see what your favorite celebrities are or athletes are up to, and there's just all sorts of great resources here. So um, I know it can be a little bit intimidating, and yeah, the home feed does look quite intimidating when you have all these people tweeting simultaneously. Um, that's why Twitter has invented something called lists, which we'll look into, which can actually break down things into categories of your choosing. But before we get into that, we're going to actually look at the search tab here at the top of the header. Uh, the search tab essentially lets you search anything from people to hashtags and comments. So as we showed before, we searched the social media hashtag. And as you can see, the results keep going and keep going and keep going. Now, let's say we do search the social media hashtag often. Rather than me going in there and typing hashtag social, oops. Rather than me going into the search bar and typing hashtag social media every time, Twitter has added a feature to uh, kind of limit the amount of effort you have to put into search. 
So once we do the search, it appears here at the top, and you see this gear on the right-hand side here. You can click that and save the search. So what that does is the next time I want to search something, I'll have a little tab below it that shows me my saved searches. So this could be very helpful if, uh, let's say, you're in the fitness industry and you want to see anyone who's talking about fitness. So we can save that search. Or let's say your favorite artist is Rihanna and you want to know about her, you can go and save that in your searches. So there's tons of options for that and it's actually very helpful, especially if you're trying to monitor people talking about certain things in your area. So keep that in mind that you can save the searches and you can also go in there the same way you added them. You can go in there, click that gear, and remove them from your searches. Now we're going to take a look at the account settings. So see this little silhouette here in the top right corner? These are your account settings. From here you can view your profile page as you can from the home feed. But you can also look at your direct messages. Um, these are something that we haven't talked about yet. This is actually uh, a different form of interacting on Twitter. Uh, the difference is that it's only for people who are mutually following each other. So for instance, Cora Yoga and myself, we're both following each other. The Perfect Mind account and Cora Yoga are following one another. Therefore, we can communicate privately through direct messages. If I wasn't following Cora Yoga, they wouldn't be able to privately message me in, their, in the inbox. They would have to mention me, and that would be public. So in order to send a private message, both parties must be following each other. No private messages can be sent to somebody who's not following you back. Then as we mentioned before, lists are a really great tool. Um, this way, you can narrow the clutter on your home feed. Uh, some people really like seeing all everything that's going on on their home feed, but it, sometimes you maybe want to just really focus down on one uh, group of individuals or or uh, people who people who have Twitter accounts. Uh, so, for instance, you can create a fitness list and add a few people to your fitness list. How you would do so is you go in there and let's create a list from scratch. So let's go over to lists. We'll create a new list. Let's call it test. This is a test on how to create lists. So you have the option of having it public to everybody so everyone can see and follow your list, or you can private keep it private only for yourself. Let's say um, you're in a business where you can have leads and prospects, uh, and let's say you're aware of some of the people who are your leads. The private option would be a better one if you are creating a list for your leads. So what we'll do is we'll save that list, and then anytime we search somebody, we can add members. So if we go to let's say Champions Way, our sister company. We want to add them to this list by visiting this silhouette here. You'll click Add or Remove from List, and you can add them to whatever list that you have there. So I could put them to Top News, Fitness. I want them in my Fitness list, and I want them in my Test list. Alternatively, if I do not currently have a list, I could create a new, new one and automatically add that person in there. Also in the account settings, you're able to see a help center, which uh, you could check out on your own time. A list of keyboard shortcuts. This is very, very helpful, but I suggest that you first familiarize yourself with the Twitter interface before you get into too much detail. Uh, about this because you want to first actually really know the core functions of Twitter and understand the uses by using clicks and then you can get into a little more detail on uh, how to speed up everything. Below that is a very crucial part of your account which is the settings tab. So once you go into settings, here you're able to customize everything from your account, your password, uh, mobile notifications, other types of notifications, uh, your actual profile, the design of it, and the apps that you use associate, that are associated with Twitter. 
Um, so I'm looking at the account. It's very basic here. You have your username, the email associated with that account, and some other basic information. If you ever need to change your password, uh, you can just hop into the password tab. Uh, sometimes people will have, uh, they'll click on a, on a, uh, on a link that will cause spam to automatically populate on their Twitter account. You need to be careful for these things. Should you ever click on any of these links and should you start sending out private messages about fat loss or any, any type of spam, uh, first thing you need to do is hop into here and change your password. If that doesn't work, then you're going to have to do a little more research on how to uh, stop the spam from being sent out from your account. But this is the first measure you need to take, and uh, often enough, it'll stop any spam from being sent out on your behalf. The mobile tab just lets you hook up your uh, your notifications to your mobile phone. Um, if you if you prefer receiving emails, you can customize everything from the notifications tab here. So anytime you're sent, for instance, anytime someone follows you or anytime someone mentions you, you can customize uh, the notifications you receive via email. If you want to take it to another level, you can do the mobile phone, but if you do get lots of followers and if you do start getting a lot of interaction, it can get a little bit annoying to get constant text messages on your phone. The profile tab is a very important tab. This is the one that we discussed at the start where um, you really want to put some good thought and time into this on your website. You want to definitely fill out your website. You definitely want to include your biography and have something good that really um, highlights your business. And uh, from here, you can actually synchronize your tweets to appear on your Facebook page. So if you have a personal Facebook page where you want your tweets to appear on, um, this is an easy way of synchronizing it and having those posts automatically appear. Uh, one of the last features in here are the design. Twitter has a set of different uh, pre-made themes that you could apply, and it changes the colors and settings of your account. Or you can add your own custom image in the background and customize the colors of, for instance, the links that appear in the, in the background image. So if you want to customize and add a little flair to your account, you could do so by visiting the Design tab. Lastly, there's the app section. If you use a lot of third-party apps, this is the place to go to change access and kind of tweak around those functions. So that's about it for the layout portion of our webinar. Uh, now I'm going to open the forum up for any questions that you may have. Uh, but first, before we get into that, I do want to mention that both Perfect Mind and Champions Way, uh, we do often host webinars. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to encourage all our participants to be active on Twitter and to start asking questions through their Twitter accounts. So if you do currently have a Twitter account, post your questions by mentioning Perfect Mind. So go at Perfect Mind and post your question on Twitter. It's good practice and uh, it's actually the way we're going to be taking our questions from now on through webinars. So um, it's a good way to get started. Uh, if you do want to learn more about Perfect Mind and Champions Way, feel free to contact us. Uh, Perfect Mind's number is 877-737-8030. And if you dial option one, one of our representatives will be able to give you a tour on our services and uh, what we can do to help your business grow. If you are a martial arts business interested in uh, software and services that we offer through Champions Way, call 877-774-5425, option one.